I must admit, and uh, be honest, be honest in the chat if you were with like me and you almost wrote off Tanner Pearson for the season. And not because we don't like him, not because we don't think he's a good player. Quite the opposite. I think he's a great player. Uh, not, I think he's a good player, not a great player. I think he's a good player. But I got so used to him being on long-term injury reserve last year. I got so used to his $3.25 million salary not counting towards the cap that um, is just, I, I don't know. But but put it in the chat if you're with me and be honest. Let's, let's be honest. We're an honest community here. Are you like me and you almost forgot that, that Tanner Pearson was on this team? Are you like me and not that you weren't, you were whole, it's not like you were wishing that he doesn't make the team, but were you almost counting on that $3 million of, of cap space? Let me know. Let, tell, comfort me. Tell me. Affirm me that I'm not the only one that was thinking this. Because I remember when I was making my mock lineups, when I was predicting who's going to be the, the starting 12 Canucks forwards, I, I rarely put him into that mix. And I would always say, oh, he's going to be the 13th forward. Oh, he's going to be the 14th forward. Oh, he's going to start the season on LTIR. But admittedly, I never thought of him as one of the top 12 forwards on the team. And again, it's not because I don't like him. It's not because I'm a hater. In fact, I think he's a very useful player when he's good, when he's when he's healthy. Um, but uh, I just, yeah, he was kind of out of sight, out of mind. So what's really interesting now is I think he's going to be the type of player that Rick Tockett really likes. Veteran, low maintenance, plays a very north-south game. He's not the fastest, but he plays north-south. He's not very fast. He's not going to spend a lot of time deking and trying to, to make all these fancy moves. He's good on the boards. He's a bigger body. He's kind of like... I, I've, I've often joked around that when I play roller hockey, I kind of look like Tanner Pearson just with the broad shoulders or whatever. And I, I think he's got good leadership skills. So for all those reasons, he might be a really good player or at least a, um, a decent player again. Now, what wasn't good is last season, I think he had eight minor penalties in this first 12 games. He just, Last season, he looked really slow. Last, Yeah, there you go. Taylor says Myers and... Pearson and Myers, the betting penalty, but that's exactly what I'm talking about, is is he had eight minor penalties in the first 12 games, and it was because he was slow. He's getting a little lazy on, on, on defense. But he seems very motivated. All accounts are that he looked good at Troy Stetcher's camp last week, that he's looked good skating with his teammates this week. So, 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 if he has recovered from his hand injury, then there are two things that you have to you have to consider. The first one is the cap ramifications. Now you got to find another three point two five million dollars of space, and with him, actually the Canucks are over the cap, so they got to make a move. And the second thing is who does he play with? Uh, but before that, let's acknowledge another donation. Coach Rob coming through. Keeps that donation train rolling with a membership. Thank you, Coach Rob. So he gives a membership, $5 donation, and that membership goes to my workout partner, Gord Wright. So let's give a warm welcome to Gord, to CCC membership, to the crew. He's been in and out. He's come to some meetups before, and uh, he actually, Gord actually came to visit me when I, when I got hurt, which was very, very kind of him. And then, of course, a big thank you to Coach Rob for, for making that donation. So thank you, Gord. I mean, thank you, Coach Robin. Welcome, Gord. So you have to think of Pearson's $3.25 million. Now you're over the cap, so you got to make a move, whether it's moving Beauvillier, Garland, Besser, Myers, whatever it may be. The other thing is, who does he play with? Who does he play with? So you're not putting him on the top line. And let's, let's presume McKayev is healthy. No, let's do both. If McKayev is healthy and Pearson makes the top 12, you could probably go something like... Pedersen, Kuzmenko, Mikheyev, Miller, Besser, and Garland or Beauvillier. And the other one of Garland or Beauvillier was Suter and Pearson. And then a fourth line of Bluger, Joshua, and either Podkosin or Hoglander. Then you have Stadnika and DiGiuseppe also battling. If Mikheyev doesn't start the season, you could go Pedersen, Kuzmenko, Beauvillier, Miller, Besser, Garland, and then you could still go then um, Suter with Pearson and then a Hoglander. 
and then Parkholz and Joshua and Bluger, and uh, also batting with Stednik and Giuseppe. So you can see uh, there's about 14 or 15 forwards that you could argue uh, would make the opening night roster. So with Tanner Pearson, yes, I've seen some of you said can, some of you concerned about his foot speed, not always being the fastest player, and then um, a, as well foot speed and then how is his hand going to hold up hopefully well and then will he be that type uh, i i think he'll be the type of player that rick talkett likes so that's a bit on tanner pearson so in a few minutes in about 10 minutes when i ask for your comments would love your thoughts on tanner pearson want to give some